We're now to the point in our organic chemistry careers where the number of reactions that we'll cover will taper off as we begin setting a foundation for introductory biochemistry. Just so you know, bioorganic compounds are simply defined organic molecules found in living systems. Although their structures can be quite complex, the way they react chemically is governed by the same principles that we've learned for simpler organic molecules up to this point in this class. The organic reactions that we chemists carry out in the lab are, in many ways, analogous to those performed by nature inside living cells. Thus, bioorganic reactions can be thought of as organic reactions that take place inside of cells rather than inside of test tubes or flasks. Over the next several chapters, I'll be teaching you guys about different classes of bioorganic compounds, beginning today with carbohydrates. Just so you know, the word carbohydrate is really just a fancy term for the word sugar. Thus, when I talk about carbohydrate chemistry, I'm really talking about sugar chemistry. By the time we finish this chapter, I'll expect you to be able to do the following. Interconvert between Fisher projections and wedge and dash structures. Define the terms we'll discuss, discuss in section one distinguish between D and L sugars. Know the reactions covered in sections 6 through 9. Interconvert between open sugars and cyclic sugars. Distinguish between an alpha and a beta sugar. And know how to form a glycoside. We'll also discuss polysaccharides, some biologically useful carbohydrates, blood types, and synthetic sweeteners. And just so you know, we'll be skipping sections 10, 14, and 15. To begin, I'm going to teach you about Fisher projections. If it seems like I'm spending way more time on this subject than is really necessary, I apologize. My reason for doing so is be simply because it took me personally a really long time to begin to understand this topic. Once I finally succeeded in wrapping my brain around it, however, it then became a whole lot easier. Simply put, Fisher projections are flat line ways of drawing molecules that have stereocenters. Rad rather than use wedges and dashes like we have with traditional stereocenters so far, we draw a flat depiction like this one. Now you may be looking at this structure and wondering how could this flat drawing possibly represent a traditional 3D structure like the ones that we've typically been drawing using wedged and dashed lines. Well, I'm glad you asked that question, me. Here's the answer. Whenever you see a Fisher projection like the one drawn here, what it's trying to tell you is that the two groups, W and X, that are drawn horizontally are coming towards us three-dimensionally. And the two groups, Z and Y, which are drawn vertically, are going away from us three-dimensionally. Thus, when we see a Fisher projection drawn like this, what it really is depicting, or trying to tell us, is this. The reason that we use Fisher projections is because, frankly, it's a whole lot faster and easier sometimes to draw just straight lines like this than to draw the wedges and dashes. That's particularly true when we start getting into molecules that have many, many stereocenters like carbohydrates. Another way of imagining it is to pretend that you are a floating eyeball looking down on this molecule. Now, if you are staring directly at this carbon center, as I'm showing here with our floating eyeball, would you not see the drawing shown here in the middle? In other words, if you were staring down at this thing, W and X would be pointing three-dimensionally towards you. And Y and Z would be pointing three-dimensionally away from you. If we oriented them so that W was to your left and X was to your right, then Z would be going up and Y would be going down. So the molecule that we're showing right here, three-dimensionally, would indeed look like this. And this is what you would see staring at this carbon center if you were floating above it. This is exactly what this Fisher projection drawn here to the left is trying to illustrate. To recap, 
I want you to remember that Fisher projections still are depicting three-dimensional stereochemistry. Once again, when we draw them, it's understood that the horizontal bonds are coming towards us, and the vertical bonds are going away from us. Thus, this Fisher projection is really just trying to show us this. And what in the world is that? Well, that, if we were drawing it using a traditional line bond structure with wedges and dashes, is this molecule shown here. So do you think you understand this? Well, let's see by doing an example problem. I want you to convert this wedge and dash representation into a Fisher projection. Once you've done that, I then want you to go the opposite direction and convert this Fisher projection into a traditional wedge and dash representation. You're welcome to pause the video now and try this on your own because I'm going to give you the answers on the next slide. So here are the answers. When we attack the first problem, we have to pretend that we are an eyeball staring right down at this stereocentered carbon. And while you don't have to orient your eyeball in this direction, I always personally prefer to do it. I place my eyeball on the side that's opposite from this carbon chain backbone. Thus, you can see that three-dimensionally, I'm basically staring right down the center. This H is coming towards my eyeball to the left, and this OH is coming towards my eyeball to the right. This ethyl group is going away from me up, and this methyl group is going away from me down. Thus, if I were staring at this molecule, we could see that the ethyl group and the methyl group would be pointing away from me, up and down, as shown here. Which direction would the OH and the H be? Well, I hope that you can see clearly that the OH would be pointing to the right, and the H would be pointing to the left. Thus, the ultimate Fisher projection that I would be drawing for this molecule would be this one shown here. Let's now do our second problem for which we've been given the opposite task, to convert a Fisher projection into a traditional wedge and bond tetrahedral structure. How do we do that? Well, the first thing that we need to do is remember what a Fisher projection is actually trying to show us. The bonds that are here along the horizontal are coming towards us three-dimensionally, and the bonds that are vertical are going away from us three-dimensionally, like this. Now, if we were a floating eyeball staring at this central carbon stereo center right here, what in the world would this molecule look like if we pivoted it slightly? Well, I hope you can agree that it would look like this. So I've got the OH and the H pointing up towards me. The OH is to my right, the H to my left. The CO2H and CH3 would be pointing down away from me, with the CO2H oriented this way and the CH3 oriented this way. Now if I take this drawing right here and I once again rotate it slightly so that this carbon chain, the CH3, the central carbon, and the CO2H are all in the plane of the uh, screen here, I hope you can see that the traditional line bond structure that we would get would look like this, with the OH coming towards us and the H going away from us. Now, to be honest, like everything that we cover in this class, this is a topic that you really have to practice on your own to get good at. If you're having difficulties with this, please pause it and look at it until it makes sense. Don't hesitate to build three-dimensional models using your model kits as well if you find that those are helpful. While I don't have time to give you countless examples here in this video presentation, I will throw a few at you that you're welcome to work out on your own. As desired, of course, I will be happy to help you with these during class. So here's my first example. The molecule pictured in this box is drawn as a Fisher projection. Which of the following tetrahedral structures represents the same molecule? And here's another. Valine, the amino acid pictured in this box, is shown here as a Fisher projection. Which of the following tetrahedral structures represents the same molecule? And here's another. Threos, the four carbon sugar pictured in this box, is shown here as a Fisher projection. Which of the following line bond structures represents the same molecule?
Now you notice this question is a little bit more challenging because we have two stereo centers. Can you do it? This is my last example, which is clearly the most difficult one in our pile. Which of the following line bond structures of these five correctly represents the Fisher projection shown here in this box? Now I realize that you may feel we haven't learned all that much from this chapter so far. That's okay. I still think it's a great place for us to conclude for now. So go take a break, rest up, and come back. We'll then continue our next magical lecture about carbohydrate chemistry.